Um, and then we have another one on. Yeah, played on the Boneyard. I, I'll be honest. I I, I like the Boneyard. It, I, I it's a good map. I I have many good games on Boneyard. Um, but here we have Kenef Galsium versus Double Soban. So we'll see how that plays out. Double Soban. Um. Their late game is going to be substantially weaker because they don't have a strong nuke to use. Um, I mean, the microwave myth can be good for harassment, you know, hitting economy and generally just messing about with uh, their enemy's positioning. But as, a, as an actual nuke winning you the game, it's very weak. Um, so again, all in on CUs for myself. All in on CUs for Descara. Meanwhile, uh, yep, all on CUs for both Empty and Sharp Blade. And keeping their base runners and heading out for caps. Uh, so, what should we expect to see here then? Um, having double Soban, I expect to see a lot more LAVs early on. Um, as far as tech choices, though, it's hard to say. Um, it seems like Sharp's definitely got a certain fondness for the battle cruisers. Um, and again, they did serve him well. They they gave him a pretty solid lump uh, against those siege cruisers. But uh, hmm. Oh well. Expansion going out. Uh, 100 RU's mined, not going to quick drop, so I find it highly unlikely it's going to be assault ship, so I'll be going for rails. Uh, meanwhile, any sign of costs for... Yeah, so Descara, meanwhile, going into the assault ship tech as he has already spent uh, his resources. Um, meanwhile, what have we got here? It's hard to say with... Coalition so on sometimes. But I'm guessing AAV tech has gone down for both of them. Meanwhile. LEVs and sand skims coming out from both sides. And we have a nudging match between the base runners. If you've never played this game, it's a fun game. Um, you see... The base runner that is centrally on the artifact will be the one that actually picks it up. So it's actually possible to nudge your opponent's base runner out of the way. And who's going to get it? Oh. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Jammy. Uh, so I managed to grab that artifact, but I don't think I'm going to get away because there's uh, six LAVs poking at it. There is a blast drone coming out here. It's not going to be able to get all of these, so I think it is just going to settle for the one kill, which probably for the best. I don't think it would have been able to get away from that, and it definitely would have been able to reach these. Um, empty's usually a little bit too on top of his micro to allow that to happen. Uh, meanwhile, some skimmers coming out here and heading along that flank. See if they're able to do much. Looks like they're just going to intercept this artifact drop. Um keep the scores 0-0 zero, zero, uh, which is very important against Soban. If Soban are able to get that free uh, artifact drop early on, it means that their ALMs are going to be at level 2 power and it will be very difficult to push in on Soban at all early game. Especially for things like Assault Ships. Assault Ships versus ALMs is a joke. Uh, I'd say it's a worse matchup than what you see with the uh, Coalition BR. And Empty here doing a great job using that high ground. He's putting a lot of damage on these assault ships. So even though assault ships are meant to counter LAVs, they are not doing well in this matchup. They are not able to cope with properly micro LAVs. Um, yeah, just all the free damage. Just Descara cannot afford to push in or he will lose two assault ships. It's that simple. Uh, and it gets even worse if Descara gets close to a Soban carrier because it, they sunder. So that would be minus four armor for these already quite squishy assault ships. Now, whether that's actually going to happen is another matter entirely. Uh, is Descara going to push in on this? I really wouldn't. I really, really wouldn't. Minus four armor on that assault ship. Taking a lot of damage very quickly. Yeah. You just can't do it. As 
bad as the Sobon carrier is, its support functionality for this kind of thing is amazing. And I, yep. Yeah. And that assault ship will actually go down because of the Sunder. Meanwhile, however, I've managed to sneak in here. I am hitting this armed logistics module. It is not powered. Which is a huge misplay. And that alien will go down. That's a free 250 CU kill. Uh, will that... Yep, that skimmer does get away. These assault ships desperately looking for a good fight. Um, not sure if they're going to be able to find it. Um, oh. Empty decides to just jump his carrier quickly so he can uh, navigate that terrain. And these assault ships looking like they're going to get a good fight now. Uh, able to push in here and threaten economy. And these LEVs a little bit too far forwards along with the uh, economy there. Empty trying to put as much damage as he can on these assault ships. But I suspect ALM is going to come into effect shortly. And that's going to make life for these assault ships very difficult. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, the stun going down and just preventing these assault ships from really having any choice. So they're just going to get swabbed. And that's the end of those assault ships. Um, yeah, don't don't mess with armed logistics modules. I thought I'd seen an opportunity to come in here and do some damage. However, with those assault ships dying so quickly, um, looks like that is not going to be the case. So I am forced to just trade and try and use as much of this high ground as possible to deal damage. Um, not the best of fights for us, I don't think, but don't think that was massively bad. Um, yeah, you can definitely see. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that any ALMs that have been destroyed aren't part of the count. So you'll find this a little bit closer than it actually is. But again, um, Soban just taking some incredibly efficient trades there uh, with the assistance of the ALMs. So again, well played there to Sharpblade and Empty taking advantage of that. Um, bit of a misplay by Descara to push in with the ALM against those ALMs with the assault ships. Uh, let's have a look at the economy situation though. Uh, I am on full three bases, so definitely an economy advantage there. Uh, Descara is expanding to his first, so mm, that that could spiral out of control a bit if the uh, if Sharp and Empty aren't able to put some damage down and pressure those economies. Uh, Descara getting interceptors now, and it looks like I'm just trying to get more skimmers up. Uh, LV's moving out to mid with railguns in support. Um, the railguns could be very risky um, if myself and Descara just spammed skimmers. But with the fact they could just mix in some AVs to make up the difference, um, not necessarily such a bad choice. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's check, double check text. So yeah, assault ship and air for Descara. Uh, for myself, it is rail and assault tech there. So I myself have also teched into air. Uh, this is not a favorable fight. Is this just sharp blade here? No, empty is also here. Um, and I feel like they should back away from this. Skimmer's coming down from high ground, putting a lot of damage on. But losing two of those sand skimmers go down. And I think they only got one kill. Uh, the reason for that being, these are fully upgraded LAVs. They have speed boost, they have 4 armor, and they have 19 damage. And I'm telling you, that is a big deal. Uh, no damage bonuses on these skimmers. But I believe that would be because I am relying on the assault rails to do damage while the skimmers uh, absorb damage. So There is method to the madness. Now, what are we seeing? Again, just lots of LEVs. What? That would be a probe going down there. Uh, meanwhile, what have we got here? No AAV tech from Empty at the moment. That's pretty dangerous to me. Oh, Incept goes down. Uh, I presume that was to support Cruiser AA. Uh, that is the case. Yep, support, support Cruiser AA is online. Uh, these LEVs just using cover. Uh, to make sure they don't take any fire from those assault rails, which is very important. 
Um, so... Just being careful not to get caught in the range of any of these LMs because if... That, however, is great. Uh, being able to poke at that ALM outside of their range with the assault rails. Uh, now engaging, putting some damage on these LAVs, putting some pretty good damage on them, as a matter of fact. Um, so yeah, empty having to be very careful. Uh, and I'm able to pull off and regen, having taken no real damage. A lot of interceptors up once again. Uh, any sign of air from either of the Sobelman players? No. How many are we looking at? We are seeing four of those interceptors from Descara and another five from myself. Um, keep in mind those LAVs, if they manage to catch those uh, interceptors, we'll be able to do significant damage and kill them. LAVs now roaming around. Quite large groups of LAVs here. Um, But again, you, you can really see the impact that the LAVs have. Um, Tuscara only has level 1 armor on his skimmers. Uh, meanwhile, we've got level 2 armor on sharp blades. I don't think that's really worth it as much as you'd expect. Uh, and ALM's now getting sniped by the air units, but that's Port Cruiser AA punishing those interceptors. Second kill that's got, I believe. Come on. Uh... So yeah, an extra 100 health and 10% increased repair rate. Not bad at all. What have we got going on? We have another wave of assault ships coming out from Discar. I'm not sure what his plan is. Uh, there's only level 1 in ALMs for Sharp, so he's quite vulnerable. But level 4. And Empty also has the microwave emitter, so he can start harassing economy, denying terrain, and, oh, there we go. And Salvage is immediately responding and moving away from that. Goes down, a little bit of damage goes on those Salvages, but nothing substantial. That is dodged. Meanwhile, Interceptors having to uh, keep clear of the LAV blobs. But these skimmers coming in on the flanks. Again, Sharp only has one point in his ALMs. So he is far more vulnerable to this kind of harassment than Empty is. Um... Those skimmers going for the support cruiser, looking to get rid of that AA. And they are going to get it because sheer number of sand skimmers here. But again, like this is the difference. Like These three ALMs here are able to perma-stun. Look at that. There's just no getting away from it. It's almost as if MT has spent an inordinate amount of time working out exactly how to perma-stun with ALMs. So, for anyone wondering, you stagger them like this, and that causes the... How should we put this? The fire times to be perfect to perma-stun. Interesting. Um, but again, Sharp is still in pretty dire straits here, um, trying to stabilize. What is Empty doing in the meantime? Empty's got a large LAV force, which should really be over here by now. Uh, looks like he's only really just heading over now, um, having probably encountered this force over here. And with no support cruiser here... Uh, Sharp is also very vulnerable to air. Oh, another missile coming down, but again, dodged. Does deny some eco, but again, it's nowhere near as damaging as when a player is unaware of it. 
Uh, one intercept does go down to the support cruiser AA here. Um, again, Sharp is bleeding a lot of resources. Um, again, it really feels like Sharp needs to get his power up a little more. Um, although, yeah, he's only got power level 1. Um, and now it's at 4 artifact pickups. Um, so they really need to take control of this side of the map. Prevent any more artifact pickups. There is another one going down now. Um, MT has got a gunship. But... Oh, that's not going to end well for, for the Scarrow at all. Again, um, high-powered ALMs will shut down this. Uh, I don't think that this gunship is a good choice here. Um, these are quite well armoured. And in the meantime, there is an artifact pickup going down. Uh, I'm not sure if... Yeah, and there's no way that MT is aware of this artifact, the artifact situation right now. Only Sharp is, and Sharp does not have the force to actually stop this. Uh, Tuscar actually putting his uh, Galsian carrier in there as well. Um, so that is going to be it. Um, so yeah, mm, Empty really just hasn't realized. Um, yeah, Sharp, Sharp has been, quite frankly, bullied. Um, but it, he had the tools to prevent this. Keep in mind, if he had put a little bit more power into his carrier... Um, could have stopped a lot of this, but uh, a little bit too late now. And that base runner will go in. Empty is all too late. And that is it. Uh, furthermore, because it's so LEV heavy, uh, I had actually started producing Honor Guard Cruisers, so even if um, it wasn't an artifact victory, um, the Honor Guard cruisers would have started shutting down the LAVs. Um, so it's just a serious lack of diversity. Um, so, I mean, AV Tech has gone down, so I presume that Sharp was looking to go into cruisers. Um, what about Empty? Empty still hadn't teched, so he teched into air, but again, just... It's very important to keep in mind, AAV tech is a very fundamental tech of Coalition and Soban. Uh, it leads into a lot of their units and tech. Um, I feel like a couple... like They could have got away with less railguns, mixing in more, L um, more AAVs to help better cope with the skimmer spam. Um, and it would put them in a better position to bring out other tools... Uh, so I think both of them going for rail guns was a poor choice, um, and both heavily invested in ALMs. Uh, think about how many CUs all this is. Um, as a matter of fact, when we go to the stats, I suspect we are going to see that they had lots of unspent RUs. RU spent, yeah. So they they had massive amounts of RU bank both of them um, and they just didn't have good ways of spending it um, so I think switching into air sooner could have worked for them um, just I know immediately anyone will say oh but there's interceptors you can't you can't go strike fighters against interceptors it's suicide the thing about strike fighters is they take three AA missiles to knock out. They're, they're that much more durable. Um, and what that really means is that an air fight between strike fighters and interceptors, if it is just strike fighters and interceptors, interceptors win. Where strike fighters come off better, they have two edges. One is that they're part of a faction which has a lot of AA options. LAVs, AA turrets, support cruiser AA, um, and then missile batteries, okay? Uh, and if you, at a push, of course, uh, you also have assault cruiser AA. Now, what this means is that if you run strike fighters with supporting AA, they counter the interceptors. Um, it's important to keep I didn't realize this until recently. Strike fighters actually have a longer attack range than interceptors do. 
So if they're flying head on, the strike fighters will fire their missiles before the interceptors will. Um, this means you can reliably get one volley of strike fighter missiles off. I know that Descara has a much better way of handling strike fighters for AA duty, but I am not aware of it. Um, but, but in the case of versus interceptors, you can reliably get a volley of missiles off. If you then add in that supporting AA, it changes the match matchup drastically because the interceptors are going to die faster than your strike fighters. Um, so for anyone who likes using strike fighters and keeps getting blown out of the air by interceptors, I highly recommend you look at what kind of supporting AA you want to use, what what you can what you can use and employ to support your strike fighters. Uh, probably at a basic level, the AA turrets are a good choice. Uh, relatively inexpensive, but they are static and they can't spot for themselves. They will be reliant on um, some kind of spotter to be able to work effectively, but they are essentially a faster rate of fire um, missile battery. Uh, same range, so the only issue is they have short view range, um, and their projectile speed is slower. So if the interceptors are running away, it is possible they will outrun the missile. So do keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I think that is the four replays we wanted to review there. Um, well played to Discara, as as I've said. He's a very strong player. Um, and thank you to Sharpblade and MT for those games. Uh, we did play three. However, the, uh, the third one... Um, it ended up being rather one-sided due to a rather tricksy build, so no need to really go through.